Today we will do some work on the lathe and the melon machine, and combine things that really should not be together. I also have made some interesting purchases for the new lathe, and I will tell you a little about this as well. Welcome to the WNDM channel. I have this camera for certain tasks, and quite frankly, it's so-so, but today I decide to mess with it. And I also have this old, huge, heavy lens, called Variagon Lomo 201. Its mount has already been altered for the 42nd thread. It is really heavy because almost all of it's made of metal. On the internet, there is only one photo where it is attached to a camera, and honestly, I do not envy that camera guy. It just the lens is this heavy, I can imagine how much the camera itself weighs. Unfortunately, with its impressive size, it was designed for only 16mm film, and therefore cannot cover most modern camera mattresses. However, I do have this Zenit with a 42 ring thread as well. There is also a small action camera and we will do a little experimenting. The ring is ideal for the lens thread. Now we need to calculate the focusing distance. I looked online and it says that it is about 50 mm, and we need to take out the adapter. All action cameras are disassembled differently. I couldn't find anything online specific to this model, so I took off the two top covers and got access to the lens. It was fixed with a small drop of glue, but unscrewed quite easily. Now we got access to the matrix that forms the image from the back side. On the lens, there is a small piece of glass. This is an infrared filter. We will need to attach it somehow as well. Logically, we will be attaching the adapter to an already created thread. So now we will take care of that. The maximum diameter of the aluminum blanks that I have is 50 mm, and it is easier to cut it off with a grinder tool than a machine tool. For our purpose, we should reduce it in diameter as little as possible. Therefore, we will center it as preciously as possible. The biggest issue when it comes to cutting with a grinder is that you need to take off a lot of material afterwards to level the surface, but there is no going around that. Ideally, I would need a band saw, but I rarely work with such diameters, so it can wait for now. We create the minimum diameter with a margin for the thread for the camera mount. Now we need to calculate the angle of rotation of the headstock and it is about 35 degrees. The angle turned out to be rather large, so we push the tool holder to the very end. The rigidity is naturally lower this way, so we remove less on each pass. But little by little, we get the truncated cone that we need. After that, we turn the headstock back and make a groove for the ring. The part doesn't fit above the caliper, so we turn it around and change the chuck. Level the surface, and now we need to make the external cone. Despite such a large overhang of the cutter, the surface came out nicely. The next step is to drill four holes for fixing the ring. Here is the drilling device helped a lot. No doubt, it is much more convenient to drill small holes when you fill the drill with your hand. We cut four M2 threads. We cut the large thread with the cutter after we pre-centered the pot. Now I purposely will not speed up the video to make it clear, so you can see at what speed all this happening. 
The whole issue is that this software, which is free, uses another kind of motor for threading, a stepper one. Even though we can mill at high speeds, that would not work with threading. But the software is free and intuitive. An unexpected solution was buying this servo motor and servo controller. Although this controller is old, it has a very interesting function, namely when 24 volts is applied to certain contacts, the control mode changes from a digital to analog and back. Now we start the spindle in analog milling mode. Quickly prepare the software for the thread cutting mode. And if there is no 24 volts power supply, the motor is already operating in step mode. Unlike a stepper motor, it can hold a good torque, even at high speeds. Plus, it is very fast switching between modes. All this is controlled by Arduino Mega, which means that in addition to the standards axis X, Y and Z, you can also add the A and B axis, and this is very cool. Soon I will assemble another machine with this inside, and I will show you how it all works together. For now, a speed of video is all I can offer. The adapter is almost ready, but the inner surface needs to be painted so that there are no ray reflections. The paint doesn't stick to aluminum very well. The surface can be scratched with a fingernail, but it doesn't matter since it's on the inside. I thought for a while how to remove this filter without damaging the glass. I decided to remove another filter from another camera. Big thanks to one of the subscribers for it. This is not a functioning device, it's for spare parts. Finally we get to the matrix, and it's not surprising that there is also this kind of filter, and it's a little larger. This is good. And here is what the matrix look like without a filter. The paint is already dry. Now it's not glossy, but made, and that's even better. The main part is ready. Now for the next step we need to somehow fix this filter inside the camera. It would be nice to place it as close as possible to the matrix, so I also decided to mill out an adapter. Here everything is easier, you need to make the cylinder. And a small depression for fixing the filter. Now we grind it into the size for the thread. Now we cut same thread, but the mode will be unusual, reverse, due to the absence of a straight cutter. Of course, I just can't wait to assemble the second machine too, all this would be many times faster. As with the first adapter, you need to paint the inside. I cut the glass a little. Now let's fix it with glue. Screw it in so that the filter is on the bottom side, almost till it touches the matrix. Put the camera back together. and screw in an adapter that's huge for its size. Looks funny, of course, but that's not all. With this lens size, it is easier to screw the camera into the lens than vice versa. We got this telescope or a photo gun. The most important thing is that it works. Otherwise, all the work is in vain. On the lens body, there are holes for attaching the drives. Here we will make mounts for attaching the lens. Could not find aluminum plates thinner than 8 mm, so we will use that. Actually, the camera should be attached to the tripod, and the lens should be attached to the camera. But in our case, it will be the other way around. The two side parts are ready. Now we make the bottom one. Later, we will cut a thread in the hole, for attaching it to the tripod. The surface quality after using the chip control machine tool is not great, it is really for the wood. We will finish it here on the manual one. The speed is lower and the rigidity is higher. Just what we need. This is a really good vise, I liked its versatility. Sometime later, I will also tell you about it. 
These parts also need to be vented out. I couldn't clamp them from the sides, but thanks to the grooves, we can clamp them from the front and the back. And now the final thread with a step of 1.27. By the way, this thread is unusual for our area, and you cannot screw the unusual bolts into it. Then we center it and drill holes for the fasteners. I inserted the end of the cutter into the upper hole, and it turned out to be very convenient to put the two parts together this way. We drill the holes, and in them we will also manually cut the M3 threads. The screws will be hexagon shaped with countersunk heads, so as not to touch the tripod platform. Purely for our aesthetics, we will go over with a fly cutter all around. The platform turned out to be quite large for its size, but the lens is not smaller either. Overall, the crocodile is ready, it looks pretty funny, and it's time to start field tests. Of course, now it's winter, there is much less color in winter than in the summer, besides it is a rather cloudy, and I think the results will also be disappointing. But let's see. The first footage I'll show you is how the camera worked before the alternation. Here it is. This is one angle. And this is the second angle. And this is the camera with the new lens. Figurative new, of course. There is a slight blurring, we could still cover the aperture mode. But there are also upsides, a shallow depth of field and good zoom. Those trees are about 110 meters away. The matrix in this camera is of course less than 16 millimeters, so this zoom is pretty good. In the spring you can look at some unusual birds. Thanks to the small depth of field, you can get good artistic compositions. The conclusion I've made is that if you replace the action camera with another one, some more expensive one with a high quality matrix, especially since the lens can always be returned to its place, this design is viable. Bye bye for now.